As we've discussed, the roles of a CEO, COO, and CFO are distinct and each has their own unique set of responsibilities. One area where these roles can differ greatly is in compensation. While all three roles are crucial to the success of a business, the way they are compensated can vary based on their responsibilities and impact on the company's financial health. Welcome to Scaling for Success. We're all about helping businesses grow profitably, scale and move to the next level. If you're looking for consultancy and mentorship that really makes a difference, subscribe to our channel or visit the Scaling Management Consultant Group website, links in the description below. Let's start with the CEO. As the top executive in the company, the CEO is typically compensated at the highest level. This is because the CEO is responsible for the overall direction and strategy of the business, and their decisions have a significant impact on the company's financial success. CEO compensation can vary widely based on the size of the company, the industry, and other factors, but it's not uncommon for CEO compensation to be in the millions of dollars. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, has refused his cash salaries from Tesla and received nearly all his compensation from that company in the form of stock. Under the terms of Musk's compensation agreement with Tesla, the CEO will earn a massive payday once the company achieves some stunning stock price and financial goals. Some of those financial milestones have been achieved, and the first of the stock price goals was hit earlier this year, unlocking the first part of his massive compensation plan. According to the proxy statement, under the terms of the company's 2018 compensation plan for Musk, the CEO would receive a 10-year maximum term stock option to purchase 20,264,042 shares of Tesla's common stock, divided equally among 12 separate tranches that are each equivalent to 1% of the issued and outstanding shares of Tesla's common stock, that would vest only if the company hit combination of market capitalization, revenue, and profitability milestones and Musk remained at the helm. McDonald's CEO Chris Kempchinski received a pay package of just over $20 million in 2021, nearly double the $10.8 million he received in 2020, due to the company's strong sales recovery and healthy stock price performance. The bulk of his pay package is in the form of stocks and options, with about $14 million in total. He received a $1.3 million salary and $4.4 million in incentives, as well as $356,706 in all other compensation. The company's top executives met two of four human capital metrics tied to bonus payouts based on diversity, equity, and inclusion goals. Next, let's look at the COO. While the COO may not have the same level of visibility or decision-making authority as the CEO, they are still a critical member of the leadership team. In many cases, the COO is responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the company, including areas like supply chain management, production, and logistics. Because of their operational expertise, coups can be compensated very well, especially if they are able to make significant improvements to the company's efficiency and profitability. During 2022, Tim Cook, Apple's COO, maintained a $3 million base salary, while receiving roughly $83 million from stock awards, $12 million in non-equity compensation, and $1.4 million in other compensation. In 2021, he brought in a total of $98.7 million in pay, which was a 569% increase from the previous year. The majority of Cook's compensation in 2021 was attributed to $82.3 million in stock awards, followed by $12 million in non-equity compensation and $1.4 million in other compensation. Finally, we have the CFO. As we've discussed, the CFO is responsible for managing the company's finances and ensuring that the business is operating within its means. Because of the importance of this role, CFOs are typically compensated well, especially at larger companies. In many cases, CFOs receive compensation packages that include a combination of base salary, bonuses, and stock options. According to an analysis by executive compensation firm Equilar and the Associated Press, female CFOs in S&P 500 companies are catching up to their male counterparts in pay. The median pay for female CFOs in 2015 was $3.32 million, while the median pay for male CFOs was $3.3 million. This shows that women CFOs are slightly out-earning men with the same title. Some of the famous female CFOs mentioned in the report include Ruth Porat of Google, who earns $70 million a year, Marianne Lake of J.P. Morgan Chase, Catherine Lesjack of Hewlett Packard, and Sharon McCollum of Best Buy. Although CFOs usually do not receive as much attention as CEOs, they are becoming increasingly important strategists at corporations. For instance, PepsiCo's Indra Nooyi broke out from her CFO role to become CEO. Of course, compensation is just one factor to consider when choosing a role in a company. 
it's important to think about your skills and experience, as well as your long-term career goals. Here are a few tips to help you make the right decision. 1. Consider your strengths and interests. 1. Are you more interested in the financial side of the business or the operational side? Do you have a background in finance or operations that would make one role a better fit than the others? Take some time to reflect on what you're best at and what you enjoy doing. 2. Think about your long-term career goals. 2. Do you want to eventually become a CEO or CFO? If so, choosing the right role early on can be an important step in achieving those goals. 2. Consider how each role might position you for future success. 3. Look at the compensation packages for each role. 3. As we've discussed, compensation can vary widely based on the role and the company. 3. Take a close look at the compensation packages for each role to get a sense of what you can expect in terms of salary, bonuses, and other benefits. 4. Talk to people in the industry. 4. If you're still unsure about which role is right for you, reach out to people in the industry who are currently in those roles. 4. Ask them about their experiences, what they like and dislike about their jobs, and what advice they have for someone considering a similar role. 5. Consider working with a fractional operation support service. 5. These services can provide expert guidance and support across a range of business functions, including finance, operations, and strategy. 5. By working with a fractional team, you can get a better sense of what each role entails and which one might be the best fit for your skills and career goals. While the compensation packages for CEOs, CUs, and CFOs can vary widely, it's important to remember that each role has its own unique set of responsibilities and requirements. By considering your strengths, long-term goals, and compensation expectations, you can make an informed decision. Like this video if you found it helpful. And for more content just like this, subscribe to our channel or visit the Scaling Management Consultant Group website at scalinggrp.com or our new website at scalingresources.com.